Deploying PCs to remote users can be a real challenge. Today, I'll be talking about one way to make that a little bit easier. What's up everyone, it's Brooks here. As companies move toward a significantly larger remote workforce, there's more demand and interest to ship PCs directly to your end users. But having to domain join a PC ahead of time or remotely can be a real challenge to overcome. A big reason for this is because you need line of sight to domain controllers in order to do domain join. One process that will make this a little bit easier is a technology called offline domain join. While this is not new, it's recently become more popular and integrated into MDM platforms such as Intune or Workspace ONE. Now, I like this option because it allows you to deploy PCs in a modern way, which really means cloud delivered or cloud powered, but still doing a traditional domain join. Now, if you ask me, doing an Azure AD join with out-of-box experience, autopilot, Windows Hello for Business is the best option for deploying PCs remotely. It's like the Tesla of PC deployment options. Okay, maybe not quite that nice, but I get that not every customer is fully modernized in order to adopt these cloud technologies. So, offline domain join can be a great first step toward getting to a more dynamic and modern way of deploying PCs. So, I'll be going through today how Workspace ONE does it and how you could integrate this into your deployment processes today. So before we get into the technical details, let's just review a few things at a high level. First, we're gonna to need to basically create a service account and an offline domain join OU for offline domain join objects to be created. We're gonna to need to do a little bit of work on our ACC, which is the AirWatch Cloud Connector. And then we're just gonna to need to create a special offline domain join profile in Workspace ONE UEM, enroll a device and test it out. All right, enough talking, let's get to work. The first step is to create a service account that will be used to create the offline domain joint objects. Here I am on my domain controller, and I'm creating a new account that will be used for this purpose. Next, I need to create a special OU that will be used to put the offline domain joint objects. And then I will need to delegate control to the service account so that it can create objects in this container. Next and finish. The next step is to modify a few things on our ACC server. First, we'll need to add this account to the local administrator group. Then we'll need to load up services and find the AirWatch Cloud Connector service. Click on log on and change it to the service account. Make sure you type the correct password, click apply, then restart the service for the changes to take effect. Next, we need to create the offline domain join profile in the UEM server. Here I am logged in. You'll navigate to Groups and Settings, Configurations. Search for Domain Join. Click here. Go ahead and click Add. You can name the domain join profile, whatever you'd like. Domain join type will be on-premises Active Directory. Domain name should already be configured because you've configured it in the directory services area of the console. Select the domain friendly name and select the machine name format. You have a few options here by using either the serial, the percent serial percent or the percent rand with a digit percent. The serial number obviously uses the serial number and the random creates a random string of digits based on the number you specify. So if I do this, cloud dash rand colon seven, this will create every object with a prefix of cloud dash and a randomized number of seven digits. Just make sure the total machine name format doesn't exceed 15 characters. Click save. Don't worry, we'll assign this later. Next, I need to create a special staging or provisioning account that will be used to actually assign the domain join profile to. I'll go ahead and click add, add user. You can use a directory user if you'd like, but I prefer to just use a basic user. Click on advance, go down to staging and ensure that this is enabled. Once you enable it, click on enabled for single user devices and leave it as standard. Go ahead and save. Next, we need to create a smart group that will be used to assign the offline domain join profile. Let's go ahead and create one and name it provisioning. 
I'll select devices or users and enter in the provisioning user that I just created. So let's go back to the domain join payload. Go ahead and click save and assign. And now you'll see a few new things. First, we need to name the assignment. Let's call it an offline domain join. Organization units is where we'll specify where these offline domain join objects will be created. If you remember back in our DC, we created an OU called offline domain join. The good news is this will dynamically search. So just type in the name of your OU and it will automatically find it. Then let's type in the provisioning smart group that we just created. Smart groups are also called assignment groups. So those can be used interchangeably. That looks good. Let's create and save. Great. We should be good to go now. So let's go to a client. I've created a standard Windows 10 client. Logged in as just a local account. Can be the local administrator or another account that has administrator privileges. I've gone ahead and copied the VMware Workspace ONE provisioning tool to the desktop. This can be downloaded from the My VMware or My Workspace ONE portal. This tracks our offline domain join profile and will tell us when it's complete. I've created a little batch file here that you're welcome to use that helps you run a few commands. The first is the standard AirWatch or Hub enrollment. And I'm telling it to enroll into this provisioning account that we just created. Remember that this account is the one that we have also the domain join profile assigned to it. Then I run the VMware provisioning tool .msi and tell it to extract all the files into a subdirectory of C temp. You definitely want to do this, otherwise it extracts everything to the root of C. And then I call the tool with a track only mode and then I tell it to launch the GUI so we can see what's going on. So let's give this a shot. The Workspace ONE provisioning tool will launch and track the progress. Once any application installs are complete, as well as the offline domain join process, a green screen will appear. You can either shut down the system or you can move it away. If you launch Reg Edit and browse to HKLM Software AirWatch, you'll see that the hub has applied the offline domain join configuration. This doesn't mean that the offline domain join has actually applied to the client machine. You'll need to check that in a different area. So go to HKLM System Current Control Set Services Net Logon and click on join domain and you should see that the configuration is applied to the client. Now we can reboot the system. Just back up, you'll notice it's joined to the domain. I simply enter my credentials and log in like normal. I'm currently on the network with this particular system, but don't worry, we'll get into how we can do this off the network in a separate video. And once I get to my desktop, the hub will automatically switch the logged in enrolled user to me, the domain user, bpeppin. This switch account process is an automatic one when we go from a staging user to a domain user. All right, so there you have it. That wasn't so hard, was it? Now, one key piece to this that we haven't really talked about is the fact that you're still going to need connection to the domain for that first time user login. And you're really gonna need a VPN appliance that supports what's called pre-logon network connection. That just means that it fires up a connection at the logon screen when the user enters the credentials for the first time. Now, I'd recommend using the VMware Tunnel application to do this. It's really simple and easy to set up. And I hope to have a video soon on just how to do that. But most other VPN vendors have this feature as well. All right, well, thanks for watching today, guys. If you found this video helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one.